Hello and welcome to this video on appraising cohort studies. In this tutorial, we will look at biases which can affect cohort studies and the impact known and unknown confounders can have. A cohort study, as defined by CASP UK, is an observational study in which a group of people with a particular exposure and a group of people without this exposure are followed over time. The outcomes of the people in the exposed group are compared to the outcomes of the people in the unexposed group to see if the exposure is associated with particular outcomes, for example, getting cancer or length of life. A cohort study is typically seen as high level research, appearing third on the hierarchy of evidence. They can often cover large population sizes and are useful for when the setting of a randomised control trial wouldn't work, for example, for ethical reasons or to study rare outcomes. A classic example of a cohort study is looking at whether smoking leads to lung cancer. To create the cohort study, you would first need to identify people who do not have lung cancer and split them into two groups, those who smoke and those who do not. Over a period of time, you will see who in the groups developed cancer and who did not. You will also find cohort studies are either prospective or retrospective. A retrospective study is as the name suggests, where the researchers will look at the data already gathered from the past up until the present day, whereas a prospective study is looking to the future. As with many of our quantitative studies, a useful tip to help you with appraising studies is to write out a PICO. This lays out the key points of the study and can assist you with praising validity and reliability. If you are not familiar with PICO, it stands for P for population or patient, I for intervention, C for comparison, and O for outcome or outcomes. Essentially, the who, what, and why for the study. Typically, this information can be found from the abstract. Unfortunately, like many studies, cohort studies can be prone to bias if not carried out correctly. Firstly, there could be selection bias, which can occur if there are problems with how participants are chosen for the study. Often the process is not as random as it is for a randomised control trial. As much as possible, participants should be similar to each other, as any major differences could cause issues later on. Check the researchers have stated clearly their inclusion and exclusion criteria and the reasons behind their decisions. The next type of bias is classification bias, which is also known as information or measurement bias. This relates to the recording of the exposure and outcomes for the study and whether any errors were made during this process. The researcher should clearly state and explain their measuring process, including whether it was subjective or objective. Our third bias is attrition bias, which looks at the effect participants leaving the study would have and whether those who are still in the study are different to those who left. The researchers should state their process for handling lost participants. Also take a look at how many people left. Was this more than the estimated figure needed for the study? Our final bias is recall bias, which can occur in a retrospective study and happens if the participants have difficulty recounting a past event. In this case, the researchers should source additional evidence. A big problem related to cohort studies is confounders, which is the effect an extra factor or factors not related to the intervention or comparison can have on the participants. This could be factors such as age, sex, lifestyle factors and family history. It's important the researchers have procedures in place of how to handle both known and potentially unknown confounders and clearly indicate which data analysis process they have used. There are a few types of data analysis which could be used in a cohort study. For example, we have regression analysis. This looks at the dependent variables, i.e. the outcomes of the study, and independent variables, i.e. the intervention and measured baseline characteristics, and studies the association between these variables after adjusting for the effects of other variables. Types of regression analysis include linear and logistic. The next type of analysis is stratification analysis which investigates how the connection between the exposure and outcome is affected by different strata of the confounding variables. For example, participants could be stratified by their smoking habits to see what impact this has. A third type is sensitivity analysis, which assesses how much the results could be affected due to different assumptions, methods or estimates. By inputting these differences, the research can see if this causes a change in the results. With our cohort studies, you will potentially see statistics which help you to appraise the results. You may already be familiar with these statistics from our previous videos. You may see an odds, risk or hazard ratio, which demonstrates whether the study favoured the intervention or not. 
These figures are interpreted by whether the ratio is lower, equal to or higher than one. A figure less than one would show the chance of the outcome occurring in the intervention group is lower than the comparison group, while a figure higher than one shows the opposite. A figure equal to one would suggest no difference between the groups. A confidence interval highlights the quality and precision of a study. Typically, you will see a 95% confidence interval with two numbers demonstrating a range of figures. The 95% means that if the study was to be repeated, 95% of the time the results would fall within the stated range. You want to see a range which is short and narrow as this would indicate participants experience broadly similar results. A p-value indicates how likely results would have occurred due to chance and not the effectiveness of the intervention. If the p-value is less than 0.05, this indicates the results are not due to chance, or chance was very unlikely to have occurred, and therefore the results are statistically significant. Results which are equal to or more than 0.05 indicate chance played a part, and the results are not statistically significant. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any further questions, please contact your site library or visit our e-learning course on the Trust Moodle page.